Welcome back to the Cross Board Interview Podcast. We are back again today for our school board trustee week. Today, we are sitting down with public school board trustee candidate for Ward 3 and 4, Ms. Laura Hack. Laura, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks. I love being here. Um, Laura, I, I've got to get this out of the way. For anyone who's listened to my show, they know the very first question that's going to come out of my mouth is, where's your sense of duty to serve come from? Probably since I was a young age. Um, I grew up doing the Girl Guide program, later going on to the Duke of Edinburgh program, where service was one of the big projects that you do. And to serve other people, uh, fulfill the need within myself um, to help out. Politics is one way you can give back. You can give back through volunteerism. You can give back through girl guys, like you said, the Duke of Edinburgh group. But you've chosen in 2021 politics, the elected route. What was it about this election, this time, moment in history that Laura Hack said to herself, it's time for me to put my name forward? I put my name forward back in 2017. Um, I lost by a tiny little margin. And you know what, I decided to give it a second go because I still care about kids. I care about education. I have a background for a bachelor of education and I want to make a difference. My kids both go to public school and I want to help them and to help their classmates and to help all the kids here in Calgary get the best education they can. The kids that are going to school now will be the ones who are looking after us uh, when we're in the old folks home and we need them to be educated. We need them to be kind and caring. And that's where my sense of uh, it's not altruistic, I guess. <laughs> that's why I'm doing this. So 2017 and 2021 are two relatively different elections. In 2017, we did not have COVID-19 rearing its ugly head. Uh, the issues around masking in school, the issues around the school board curriculum that the provincial government has been brought in. So this is a completely different election than in 2017. What are you hearing from the parents of Ward 3 and 4 when you're out talking to them, when you're, there, you're out pitching yourself for their, for, your, for their vote come October 18th? Um, the biggest thing I hear out right now is curriculum. Um, and how we can't let our kids be taught this. This is the number one thing on parents' minds, on teachers' minds, on grandparents' minds. They've taken a look at it. They've heard from experts. Um, I've sat down and chatted with a few experts. I've, I've sat down and, and had discussions about what's actually in this curriculum. And it's not, it's not good. It's not going to serve the purpose that we're trying to get in education is to be educated, to be critical thinkers. Um, this draft doesn't fulfill that need the the idea so, of oh go, go ahead on. continue i was gonna say and then the other thing is is covid and the biggest thing i'm hearing from parents is we want our kids to be safe um we want there are there are a minority that uh, don't want their kids masks or i don't even know if they have kids but they don't like masks but the majority are saying they want their kids masks they want them protected we don't have a vaccine for them yet. Parents don't have that option. And obviously that will be a, a parental decision when it comes down to it. Um, but a lot of people are saying like, look, we're waiting for data. What can we do to keep our kids safe? We want to be notified if there's um, COVID cases in the classroom. Parents want that information and want their kids safe. One of the, uh, we'll, we'll start with the curriculum area first, because it was the first thing that you brought up. Um, you know, as much as I know, as much as I think everyone who's running for school board trustee knows that the province dictates the school board curriculum. They, uh, the, the Calgary Board of Education has said we would not test pilot the current curriculum in its state. We are still yeah. waiting to see if the province is going to go back and re-edit, but right now they have said that I think they're more worried about COVID-19 right now. If the province does implement the current curriculum as it's written, as it was presented to the school boards, the school board would have a duty to implement it or try to implement it. How would you want to potentially not battle, but push back against the province and say, it's not doing what it needs to do for our, the future of our children, but also for the education of our kids? 
So our superintendent and the superintendents right now are doing a great job in putting together what needs to be changed in order for it to be implemented properly. I think that review actually needs to go ahead. No, we're not going to pilot it in the schools. That's not beneficial to our kids. But what our experts can do is look at what needs to change, what wording needs to change, what are the outcomes. Um, there's a lot of facts and figures and information in there that isn't critical thinking, isn't um, beneficial. So one example, uh, I've got a daughter in kindergarten right now. And if this was piloted this year, she'd be learning the numbers one to 10, which are absolutely fine. Part, part, whole. So five plus five is 10, six and four is 10. Um, but then all of a sudden they want to throw in there, now convert kilometers to miles. These kids don't understand uh, common units yet. They are looking at how many hands fit across the table or how many thumbprints can you make on your pencil? How many of them are there? Um, and they don't understand decimals. They, they don't, those concepts don't make sense. So to do a conversion in there is non-sequential. Their learning is not there yet. So what we need to do is make sure that we are fixing these issues before it ever sees the classroom. Otherwise, it's going to turn kids off now. I appreciate that because when I read the curriculum as it was presented, I went, well, I, I didn't learn that until grade four. And now they want kids in kindergarten, which is supposed to be learning colors and all that. It's decimals and ch uh, converting, which understandable. That's how they presented it. That's how they see fit. But let, let's go back to the drawing board on this one. Um, I, I want to continuing on with this curriculum because you, you mentioned that you've talked to parents and you've talked to voters and you've talked to the people who have read this. What are their major concerns? What is the what is lacking in the curriculum in from your perspective that needs to change? Because we can talk about what's in it, but from your perspective, what do we need to talk? And for those who are listening right now and ask me, why am I asking this? She is gonna be implementing this if elected on October 18th. And we will be talking about her priorities later on in the interview as well. But for those who are listening, what need, what do kids need to be learning in school right now from your perspective? Um, so my, the biggest issues that I'm hearing um, is that this is Eurocentric. This needs to have an Indigenous perspective when we're teaching it, not just from a U.S. Um, um, reservation perspective or, or that, but we, we need Canadian um, and Indigenous people from Turtle Island contributing to this. It's neurotypical. It's not going to serve those who um, have special needs or who, who don't understand what we what we see as normally understanding um, that way. Um, it's heteronormative. Um, and this entire draft, it actually needs to go through a large either rewrite uh, to fix those issues. Fixing minor things that they've been doing online doesn't fix those issues. I, I, I'm so glad you, you've made my job so much easier because it's the perfect segue into your priorities as a school board trustee on your website. You, you talk about racial bias in classrooms. You talk about special needs and pup, uh, pupil teachers ratios, which for the listeners and to my viewers, the link to Laura's website is in the show notes. It's laurahack.ca. I highly recommend if you're in Ward 3 and 4, go check it out. But on the in the my priority section, you say under special needs and pupil teacher ratios as your trustee i will ensure the financial focus of cbe is your child and the supports they need to be successful in their education this means no more overcrowding in classrooms how will that benefit children in the 21st century but also in 2021 and beyond for the next four years of reducing those classroom sizes and making them a little bit more engageable for the kids Absolutely. We know that the number one uh, successful thing that we can do is put classroom caps on. The more one-on-one -on -one time your student or the student has with a teacher, the more beneficial that learning will be. They can answer questions right away, fix errors. If a, a teacher saying grade one has 30, 35 kids, they can't do those one-on-one -on -one corrections. Um, they, may, they may miss something when they're doing large reading groups. Um, we, we need those lower ratios 
to help our students immediately. We saw through COVID that we did the hub online learning um, throughout last year. Those classes were overcrowded. There wasn't as much one-on-one -on -one time. Um, those students, some of them did not benefit from those large groups that they would have in, in a classroom environment where the teacher was right beside them, watching them do their writing, watching them do um, listening to their reading, correcting stuff um, as they're going through it. Um, one of the, uh, so for transparency notice, this is coming out in the first week of October, but we are recording it in the third week of September. So right now we are seeing a rise in the fourth wave of the Delta variant of COVID-19. Schools are being hurt. The tracking is happening. People are getting notified that if there's a outbreak of COVID-19 in classrooms, um, I think a lot of parents after last year, they wanted to send their kids back to the school after doing online learning for one year. Is there a balance approach that needs to be taken from the school board's perspective when it comes to online learning, when it comes to class sizes, and when it comes to teachers one-on-one -on -one time with students? Because uh, you talk about reducing size and having that ratio, but I'm hearing, and I think everyone else would be hearing, is that's going to cost money. So where's the balance? Where's the balance of getting more teachers involved without raising potential school board taxes? And, and that's what each board gets to decide, right? Yeah. So the priorities that I'm putting forward are things that I'm going to be pushing for. Um, right now, we have a lot of there was a mandate to have teachers back in the classrooms away from the central board office. Um, they looked at those facts and figures and moved people around and shuffled them. But what they did was shuffle them to the area offices. Not all the people who were in the board office were even teachers. So putting them in the back in the classroom wasn't possible. We need to be looking at what best uh, fits the needs of our students. Are those principals on top of principals? at those area offices actually benefiting our kids learning. And yeah, there's going to have to be some change if the budget doesn't increase to make sure that there are enough teachers. Um, and our focus will have to shift based on the budget we have. We can't make um, more money appear out of, out of nowhere. And we can't have a shortfall in a year. CBE's mandates don't allow that. So we do have to work within the confined budget we need to be showing the provincial government exactly what we need and what the needs of our students are. And our job as trustees are to advocate. We need to go between uh, parents and students' needs and advocate on behalf of them to the province because they're not always here. They don't understand what happens in the classroom. We, we are the advocates there. Before we move into engagement, because I know that is a priority on your website that you want to bring forward, I want to talk about another priority on the website that you've put out, which is racial bias in the classrooms. Um, for those who are listening and for those who are uh, thinking one thing when it comes to those three loaded words, four loaded words, what do you mean by racial bias in the classrooms? So the reason that was included in one of my priorities is, is in talking to parents in the last couple of years, and especially when they were doing the hub online learning, was that parents are now seeing what's happening in the classroom uh, more so than they had been previously. One thing that kept coming up is in the grade three cu curriculum where they learn about um, Peru and where they learn about uh, India, is that parents who are from India or their grandparents from India we're seeing that the teacher's presenting it in a way that they didn't see it as growing up there. So it was being presented in through photos, in writing compare and contrast stuff. So what they were showing was Canada is a beautiful place, um, blue skies, all nature. And then they were showing India and only the parts of it that was what we consider like slums or um, uh, dirty and they're saying okay well now compare India to Canada well that's not all Canada is and that's not all India is and we need to be providing our teachers with learning opportunities to see this because not all teachers are going to travel throughout the world in order to teach about these countries but we need to make sure they're teaching it in a way that is not racially biased um, or or gender biased so if you're teaching about Peru they've got um, uh, 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 indigenous people there who men and women both knit 
Um, so teaching that this is a women's job, this is a man's job. We, we just need to break down some of those barriers so that all students feel comfortable and safe in the classroom. That I am so appreciative of you saying that because I remember my growing growing up and I, I did not go through the Calgary uh, Board of Education schools, so I do not know what they were taught. I was taught in Ontario, but I remember that. I remember the compare and contrast of here's this country and here's this country and you're thinking, okay, I know that, but there are still parts of this country that are, and I'm not, I'm not trying to say that we're all bad, but there are parts that are run down and we need to fix that. So I appreciate that. <clears throat> Sorry. I want to also talk a bit, a little bit, and you talked about it just briefly before we went into racial bias, because I want to get in as much as we possibly can in our 30 to 40 minute interview, which is public engagement. School board trustees are usually the forgotten elected politics. They don't really seem to, they don't make the waves as the mayor or the councillor, the MP or the MLA. So I wanna know, how do you change the role of the school board trustee to engage with the public? Because I think most people will say, I want my kid to go to school, get a good education and come home. But in reality, when they come home with a ton of homework, the first person they're going to call is the school board trustee and say, hey, why is my kid getting inundated with this type of homework? How do you change the public engagement and public perception around the school boards and why it's so important to elect people like yourself into positions of the school board trustee? That's a loaded question. I apologize, but I love it. <laughs> I'll, I'll start with like, we are the forgotten ones. Um, CBE and um, Calgary Catholic jump on to the bandwagon of the municipal elections um, so that they don't have to run it themselves with more cost efficient. I get that. We are both local. We serve here in Calgary, um, but it's kind of that forgotten piece. Uh, Calgary mayor and Calgary councillors make, make and MLAs and all that make way more money than school board trustees. So there's not as many people going out for um, for the trustee position. As a teacher, I'd be making more money. Um, if I was in the classroom, then I would be as trustee. Um, but for me, it's where our focus needs to be, where the oversight needs to be. And I think that's a really important role. It doesn't always attract um, your most qualified or the best people out there because of the pay. Um, but what I want to bring to that, and this is, a, this is something that's coming from me personally, is the public engagement piece. Every time I've talked to somebody, whether it be on the street, at a grocery store, um, just door knocking, whatever they go, we've never seen a trustee door knock. We've never seen, we don't even know what our trustee name is or what they look like. It's crazy to see your face around here. And that's why I included it. I want to be involved in the community associations. I want to show my face. I want to be going to uh, events when we can hold them, obviously. <laughs> Um, but people need to know what we're doing because people make the assumption that it's all closed doors. You only have one public board meeting every two weeks. We need to be seen. We need to be there to listen. We have two ears, one mouth. We should be listening twice as much. Our job is, is to represent parents and to advocate. But I will be at those meetings. I will be at school council meetings. Um, I want to engage parents. I want to engage the public as to what are the things that we're doing? We only hear about CB when they make the news for uh, issues rather than, hey, look what we're doing. Here's how we're improving education. Um, we need to be communicating that with the public. So that's a personal promise that I can make as an elected trustee um, to actually be there. I, 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 the reason I bring up public engagement, I'm so happy that someone's put it in their priority list, and there are other candidates who have as well, but uh, public engagement can be a double-edged sword. Uh, you can go talk to every single parent who has a kid in the public school board uh, and talk to them about their issues. You will hear a diverse opinion on a diverse set of issues. How do, you in, how do you envision being the trustee that is able to balance the needs of what parents are telling you against what is needed in the classroom? Because sometimes the mi a minority of people will say, take the mask issue. They don't like masks. They want masks not to be forced upon their children or if children in schools. 
How do you listen to both sides of the issue while being honest with yourself as a school board trustee, if you're elected, but also being the representative of the people who put you there? Absolutely. Um, so you can always listen to what parents want, what a vocal minority wants, and I can absolutely be there to listen and I can appreciate them advocating on what they believe. That's my, my job. I can do that, but I know at the end of the day, I actually need to sit down and listen to what the experts are telling us. Parents aren't necessarily going to be experts on curriculum development, but what I can do is make sure that I'm also listening to those who are experts who have PhDs in curricular development, who have developed curriculum before, and say, here's what they're saying. How does that compare um, to what parents are saying and their needs? As a teacher myself, I know what students need to be successful in the classroom, so I have that background knowledge. I'm not just a parent. I'm also a teacher, I'm also an education advocate. Um, I think balancing those will always be an issue, um, but I think knowing where I'm going to be taking my advice from, it's not going to be from a vocal minority, it's going to be listening to the experts on, on what our students need, but also understanding that parents have separate issues and advocating on their behalf if their child needs something to be successful in that classroom. So on the flip side of this, and this is where public engagement comes in handy with communications, is if there's an issue you believe strongly in, I'm not sure what that issue would be, but just say there's an issue out there that you believe strongly in, whether, let's say, racial bias in classrooms, you believe strongly in that, but you're hearing from the majority of people in your wards of Ward 3 and 4 that it's not an issue for them. How do you balance that out? How do you balance the needs that you have going into this position against the needs of the parents who are saying, it's great that you want to talk about it, but right now our priority is COVID-19. Our priority is masking. Our priority is smaller classroom sizes. Racial bias in classrooms, great. We can talk about that two years from now when COVID-19 is over with, but right now it's not a priority to us. How do you prioritize that and how do you balance the needs that you want against what the people who have put you in there as well none of those issues are mutually exclusive <laughs> i think i, I, <laughs> I, I love I, the you, short brief answers it's just not mutually exclusive um you you could talk about masking and we can make committees and have discussions with experts in health care and all of that but that doesn't mean that other work needs to stop i know that teachers balance so many different things trustees should be able to balance so many different things um, and I'm, I'm putting the kids first by not stopping important issues because something more important comes up. I, I think that we can work on a lot of those things at the same time. Um, I, I, I'm just looking at time here, about 25 minutes into the interview already, and I, I want to get this out of the way. Um, uh, the school board, the Cal Calgary Board of Education, uh, did before the school year started, I think if I'm not mistaken, back in August, did say that they were going to implement mask uh, mandate for the school year. How would you yes. have voted on this issue? Because I think when I talk to uh, parents, that's the one thing they want to know from the school board trustees. So I'm going to ask that and rip the bandaid off. How would you have voted on that issue if you were elected at the time? Uh, with cases rising already at the end of August, I would have voted for a mask mandate. I think it's the number one thing that's going to protect our kids. Uh, the five to 12 year olds or five to 11 year olds, sorry, can't be immunized. We need to find other ways to protect them. I know that um, HEPA filters will help, but a lot of the school um, has sufficient uh, air quality right now. So I'm told. Um, <laughs> So all we're trying to do is, is mitigate risk. And right now, knowing that COVID is airborne, we can mitigate risk and reduce the risk of our children. I have two kids who can't be vaccinated yet, so I will be voting on their safety. I want to I want to jump to the future a little bit. Let's uh, let's put ourselves on October nineteenth. October nineteenth, you are now the newly designated Cal Calgary School Board trustee for Ward Three and Four. What is priority? Wow. What is priority number one for you on day one of your job? Uh oh. oh. Not sure just what happened. This is the great thing. We will cut this out. I'm assuming something. Is it my end or your end? 
No, it might be my end. We have Telus um, working in the back alley right now. Okay. Okay. It's weird. I can still hear you. It's still recording. Okay. I just can't see you. <laughs> so we'll, we'll put a... The video will pop back up. <laughs> there you go. We'll, we'll pop up here in a few seconds, but we'll, we'll continue. Actually, we'll give it a few seconds, see if it does uh, kick back on here. And let's see if I stop my video and then turn it back on. Nope. <laughs> I thought it might. No, nope. must be on my end. Shoot. I'll just give it a few seconds here. And if not, we'll just put a beautiful. Uh, the photo that you have on your website over top of it during this part of the interview. Okay. <laughs> so if it pops back up, it pops back up. We'll do a disclaimer in the middle of the, uh, at the beginning of the episode saying that your video cut out and it is what it is. But getting back to that, uh, priority number one on October 19th for Laura Hack as the new school board trustee for Ward 3 and 4 would be what? Oh, difficult question. There is going to be a lot of information that I'm going to be given as a new trustee, reading over governance and everything else, but making sure that that transition is smooth from past board to current board will be um, the biggest thing. We know that the trustees over the last four years have struggled to work well together and have been issues. So building relationships will be my number one priority with the schools, um, with community associations, public engagement, but also with the other trustees elected. I need to be able to work with them so, for the benefit of our students. Now, as the, we're still putting our time, had time machine hat on and we're jumping into the future. As a business owner, I have to put metrics into place when I start a project or start a business or start uh, 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 anything. I put metrics into place to say, I need to deliver X, Y, and Z for this to happen to make sure that I'm a successful in my career path. So I want to know, as the next school board trustee for Ward 3 and 4, what metrics are you going to put in place for the first 100 days in office to ensure that, uh, and I'm going back to your website here, you will have ongoing community engagement and com open communication, provide students with the best educational experience and opportunities Calgary has to offer, and lead and govern the Calgary Board of Education using your knowledge and experience. What metrics are you going to put in place so those are accomplished? And that way, I, if, I, if you're elected in year time, I can come back to you and say, let's sit down for a year in a, a year in review and have you accomplish them. Yeah, absolutely. So keeping those in mind, um, going through the day to day stuff that we're doing, um, using measurement tools. So are we reducing uh, racial bias in the classroom? What are we offering? I will be keeping record of everything that I do and that I vote on um, I know there are certain timelines that we have to meet for our students achieving. Uh, what does our budget look like? All those are preset, but I will be accountable to those who elected me by being open and honest by what is being done and what I've done to accomplish um, what I've set out to do. Awesome. In order to get to October 19th, in order to get to your first 100 days, you first have to be elected. Now, this is the point of time when I'd say turn to the camera and look straight at the people who are electing you. But as your camera has uh, uh, mysteriously stopped working for a few minutes, we will say this. Talk to the people of Ward 3 and 4. Talk to the family members. Talk to the uh, parents who are thinking of putting their trust in you to lead the school system in Ward 3 and 4 for the next four years. Why should you be the next school board trustee for the Calgary Board of Education's three and four wards? My name is Laura Hack. I'm running for public school board trustee in wards three and four because I am a mom, a teacher, and education advocate. I care about kids. I spent my entire life advocating for and working with kids, whether it be through Girl Guides, Park and Place, uh, Park and Place through the city of Calgary, um, library programs, all that. I care about our kids and I want them to be uh, educated in the best manner possible. I have the experience as a teacher that nobody else in these wards have. 
I know what students need to be successful in the classroom. Come out and vote October 18th um, so that we can accomplish these goals together. My last question for you, because literally that was the last question that had to cut out at that moment was, um, there are people yelling at the computer screen. There are people probably yelling on the deer foot on, at their radio, uh, at their car stereo right now saying, why didn't you ask this question? How can people reach out? How can people learn a little bit more? How can people of Ward 3 and 4 ask you questions that we may have missed in the last 30 minutes? Absolutely. Um, the biggest piece of information out, me, out there on me is my website at www.laurahack.ca. And if you have any questions that aren't answered on there, I'd love you to write uh, me an email at laura at laurahack.ca. That comes directly to me. I answer those questions personally, um, and I try to get back to you right away. And she does. She got back to me very quickly when arranging this interview. Um, I do want to say to my listeners and to my followers, the links to the email address and website are in the show notes, along with, if I'm not mistaken, Facebook and Twitter as well, for those who are yeah. very social media savvy that they can. Thank God you did not promote a TikTok because I would not have put it out there because I am anti-TikTok. <laughs> there we go. That's, no, that's I'm my most rant. active on <laughs> I'm most active on Twitter and, and the Facebook page there. Awesome. Um, so with that, I, I want to thank Laura for sitting down and doing this. Uh, I also want to take a moment and say this. We are in October now, everyone. This is airing in October. We are in October. We are days away from this election. Get out, educate yourself on the candidates who are running in this election. School board, Senate, municipal, all of the above. Learn who your candidates are and vote for the person who is best going to represent your values and your morals on your election day. I do not want to see people on Facebook and Twitter complaining that their politicians aren't listening to them if you do not vote. If you do not vote, I do not want to see you complaining. With that, I, mean, I say that with all my interviews, with that, I thank you, Laura, for doing this. It's been an honor and a pleasure to sit down with you. And uh, I wish you the best of luck on October 18th. Thank you so much. I appreciate this.